Oh, I could totally eat a big apple like this, this big with, mama. with a big scoop of almond butter. Vani Hari has been called a one-woman consumer protection agency. These pickles look good. Yeah, they do look good. She's mobilized hundreds of thousands of supporters by successfully campaigning for change in processed foods on her blog, The Food Babe. You have become an absolute food revolutionary. You had 52 million visitors to your website last year. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about your story. How did you get here? I grew up, like most people, um, on a standard American diet. I had two immigrant parents that came here from India, and they really didn't know how to cook American food, but they wanted to adopt the American culture, so they really allowed me and my brother to eat whatever we wanted. McDonald's and Burger King and Wendy's and mm. all of the different fast food restaurants out there. Looking back at the way I used to feel, I was like a zombie walking through life. I never knew what it felt to have true energy and true vibrance. Not only did I get healthier, you know, my hair got stronger, my skin got clearer, my eyes got brighter. I look like a totally different person. I started writing about the ways that I have personally been duped by certain food companies is when I started to realize I had a passion for holding them accountable. So talk to me about your original success with Chick-fil-A. I wrote a blog post called Chick-fil-A or Chemical Filet and it got so viral that I think Chick-fil-A took notice and shortly thereafter Chick-fil-A reached out to me and invited me to their headquarters to talk about these ingredients and see where the consumers heads were as far as improvements they could make. They had me list in priority order my concerns and my number one priority was removing antibiotics from their chicken. Antibiotics are used to prevent poultry deaths in factory farms and fatten birds faster for slaughter. This practice has been linked to development of drug-resistant superbugs in humans. And when you asked Chick-fil-A to take the antibiotics out of their chicken, what did they say? They said, no way, it's not possible. The guy who's the head chicken supplier was in the room, said this is something that there's not enough supply, there's no way we can do this. And I said, I bet you can inspire your current suppliers because you buy so much chicken. I bet you can do it. And I encouraged them in that room. And then a year later, they made the decision. In February 2014, Chick-fil-A announced a plan to phase out antibiotics in its chicken over the next five years. Well, I think Bonnie's had a national impact already, and of course Washington sees what Chick-fil-A uh, has done with taking antibiotics out of their chicken in the next five years, that's Vani. And I think you look at what happened to Kraft with, you know, some of the yellow dyes that were in the macaroni and cheese that are now coming out, Subway ingredients in their bread. That's all Vani and hundreds of thousands of consumers who are taking control of, of the market. Yellow number five and yellow number six specifically are known carcinogens. Hari's change.org petition asking Kraft to remove yellow dyes has garnered over 365,000 signatures. You've gotten quite a few people to sign these petitions, hundreds of thousands of people to sign these petitions. What do you think it is about you that people gravitate towards? When they find out, for example, that American food companies are reformulating their products without certain chemicals for people overseas, but not their own citizens, they get upset. There's an established food interest, the, the food processors. That's a big, big industry in the United States. So consumers need to take a very, very active role, not only on policy, but also voting with their dollars and, and moving away from the kind of foods that are highly processed that are driving up diabetes, heart disease, high blood pressure, all the rest. Today, a growing number of people are spending more for higher quality food. McDonald's sales are down and Chipotle, which promotes organic ingredients and meat from animals without antibiotics, reported double digit revenue gains over each of the past five years. What is holding the FDA back from enforcing regulations and testing these ingredients? They are overwhelmed. When the FDA was given authority over 30 years ago to regulate food additives, there was about 800. Now there's over 10,000. Part of the problem you know, with the FDA is it's so underfunded and there aren't enough people there to actually monitor at the kind of level that we need to to really understand what's in our food. And we better get on the stick. We defund those agencies and then we criticize that they're not working. Hari's best-selling book, The Food Babe Way, capitalizes on a growing awareness of health. But Hari has critics who say her science has sometimes been faulty and accuse her of bullying companies into changing ingredients. 
Oncologist Dr. David Gorski writes in his blog, sciencebasedmedicine.com, she is a seemingly never-ending font of misinformation and fear-mongering about food ingredients, particularly any ingredient with a scary, chemically-sounding name. Hari has issued corrections to some claims, but she stands by her message. Fresh, natural food is better for you than processed food. One of the most fundamental things consumers can do is to vote with your dollars. So when you make a purchasing decision at the grocery store, think about who you're supporting. Are you supporting the junk food companies that are allowing obesity and heart disease and diabetes to increase? Are you supporting an organic farmer? Really think about that, because every choice you make impacts the world around you.